Let's start with the latest viral video sensation making the rounds, a conversation between President Barack Obama and comedian Zach Galifianakis on his Funny or Die program, Between Two Ferns. So how does this work? Do you send uh, Ambassador Rodman to North Korea on your behalf? I had read somewhere that you'd be sending Hulk Hogan to Syria, or is that more of a, a job for Tanya Harding? Zach, he's, he's not our ambassador. What should we do about North Ikea? North. While we move on. I have to know, what is it like to be the last black president? Seriously? What's it like for this to be the last time you ever talk to a president? It, it must kind of stink, though, that you can't run, you know, three times. You no, know? actually, I think it's a good idea. Uh, you know, if I ran a third time, it'd be sort of like doing a third hangover movie. It didn't really work out very well, did it? Galifianakis being one of the stars of the Hangover movie series. Jokes aside, the purpose of the six and a half minute video was really for the president to push the March 31st deadline for people to register for Obamacare. Have you heard of healthcare.gov? Here we go. Okay, let's get this out of the way. What did you come here to plug? Well, first of all, uh, I think it's fair to say that uh, I wouldn't be with you here today if I didn't have something to plug. Have you heard of the Affordable Care Act? Oh, yeah, I heard about that. That's the thing that doesn't work. Why would you get the guy that created the Zune to make your website? Healthcare.gov works great now. And millions of Americans have already gotten health insurance plans. And what we want is for people to know that you can get affordable health care. One of the tenets of the Affordable Health Care Act is getting young people to sign up, and as a result, the president has been making the rounds trying to reach young people here on late night shows, etc. But as much as we're seeing the commander in chief in an, another role, like here as comedian in chief, it's at the expense of the traditional press. The last time that Obama sat down with the New York Times was last summer, the last time with the Washington Post in 2009. It's funny. You see the president in this light, but is the American people really being served and getting the information they need when it's coming through this kind of a channel? The American people are being served because this is an ad, and it was really never promoted as anything other than a shameless plug. In some ways, this is kind of a dumb moment in the sense that the Obama campaign in 2008 figured out that the media landscape, as we'd like to call it, had changed profoundly, and that especially if you want to reach a certain segment of voters, people that we know are not the folks who watch traditional news or read traditional newspapers, you're going to do things like this. Um, at the same time, it's really important important to note that when he was handed the line about North Korea, it's very clear. President Obama knows he's still president. It doesn't matter what channel he's on, what medium he's using. He's not going to do diplomacy in this way. This was funny, and it was probably one of the best ways to reach the audience that he's trying to reach. I understand that, you know, he hasn't sat down with the New York Times or the Washington Post. And at this particular moment, if he if he was able to have a sit down with mm -hmm. either one of those news organizations, they would be talking more about what's going on in the Ukraine and what's happening internationally than what's going on with the Affordable Care Act. What he's trying to do is reach that audience that really isn't – reading the New York Times and the Washington Post on a regular basis. He's trying to trying to get them to sign up for the Affordable Care Act so that it can reach the, tar the target number that he's been trying to reach with the March 31st deadline coming up. So I think this was a an absolutely great way to do that and to actually show a side of him that we don't get to see very much. I mean, if they could do this on, on in a national setting on, say, ABC or NBC or one of those, he would would really take off. And I think even reach more people. So are we losing our place at the table, though, when it comes to covering the president, when this is the type of availability, even if it is in an ad situation like this, are we losing kind of that access and that, that place at the table to question? Well, the question becomes, how do you define we? I mean, if you're talking about the traditional media, mm -hmm. I wouldn't say that we're losing our place. I'm just saying that there, there are other media outlets being added. Okay. And, and and the the president and others in the political and governmental apparatus are finally starting to understand that people are getting their news and information from various sources, and they're going to have to sort of sort of spread that table out. They're going to have to 
to go to other outlets in order to be able to get their message out. So I think the definition of we is a lot broader now than it once was. The other thing this does is it reveals something that's been an ill-kept secret among journalists is that the president has always set the agenda. We like to claim that, oh, no, we set the agenda. We sit down with the president. We're going to talk about what he wants to talk about. No, it hasn't been that way for at least half a century. But this is just a very sort of self-evident, in-your-face way of going. He went on this particular show in this particular format to do this particular thing. They didn't have any control. The only control they had was to say yes to his agenda, and they did that. And I think the other thing that this points out is that he's still way above the curve when it comes to how to reach audiences in different ways. And if if I'm a Republican challenger, or if I'm if I'm a Demo- Democrat thinking about running for national office, here's the guy that I want to emulate. This is the way in which I want to reach Americans and do it in this kind of manner. So I think he's, he's sort of sending a message out there that, hey, I, I, I'm still the man when it comes to being able to reach audiences in innovative ways. And to control it. I, I can tell you yesterday I ended up first seeing this on the Today Show. Later in the day, saw it on CNN. So it was even one of those things that by controlling the message and doing this on Funny or Die, the president and the Obama administration were still able to infiltrate infiltrate the mainstream media in that way. Yeah.